Hey beautiful people, it's your girl Kishari K and I'm back with another word. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm a certified life coach. I empower others to become everything that the Lord has called them to be. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you here, my brothers and my sisters. So what we're going to be talking about today, well, what I want you to ask yourself first before we get into the word is, am I producing fruit? That's what I want you to ask yourself. I want you to ask yourself if you are producing fruit. And I'm not talking about basing your fruit off of the material things that you have gained, you know, or the favor that you have gained from people, whether that be from just what you do at your job, your society, your business, whatever, you know, your kids. That's not what I'm saying. Base it off of producing fruit would be the fruits of the spirit and i didn't even think i was going to start here but let me just read this first it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control so from the things that i've listed i want you to really think about have i been producing those things have i been producing the the fruit of love you know or joy or peace in my life or patience can people really see you and say this person really loves me has been showing me love you know like jesus can people see joy in your life can people see peace in your life can people see patience in your life like or are you an impatient person have you been going off on people or not even just where they can hear you but just yourself you know just i haven't been that way in, in a minute but at first i was bad okay it was terrible for me my patient level with people and how quick i would get annoyed and it would show there was no patience in my life the fruit was not showing what about kindness, you know? Are you kind to people? Are you good to people? You know, are you showing the fruit of faithfulness? Gentleness, are you gentle with people? Or do you talk to people in a gentle way? Or are you always aggressive or just and just saying whatever you want to say? Well, like, look, I got to tell the truth, you know, but you're not really doing it in a gentle way. And do you have self-control? Are you going in there sneaking them brownies? <laughs> sneaking those sweets, knowing that you're not supposed to be eating all this stuff. Because you got goals that you are trying to reach when it comes to your summer body. Just think about that. Am I really producing the fruit? Because I'm laughing, but God said that the fruit is what's going to let people know that you are my disciple so that's what's going to separate you from the world that's why i say it can't be based off of the things that you have received the the gifts that god has given you or the blessings you know because people in the world they also have those blessings you know where they have the houses the cars the money they have all those things but the difference that the thing that makes you different is how you choose to love, how you choose to be patient, how you choose to be kind, how you choose to be good, faithful, have self-control. They can look at you and say, man, there's something different about you because you're walking in the identity of Christ. The fruits of the spirit is really the identity of Christ, which is what you should have. So what I wanted to start off with how this um, word even came about was um comes from mark four and we're going to talk about the parable of the sower it says because jesus was teaching to the people but he was teaching to them in parables and he taught about the sower and he asked them did they not understand you know he was talking to the disciples and so he chose 
he decided to help them understand. He said, the sower sows the word, okay? So you know right there, the seed is the word of God that's being sown. Some of the words sown on the path. So the ground, the path is the heart. It says, some are the words sown on the path. When they hear, immediately, Satan comes and takes away the word sown in them. All right, so there are some people who hear the word of God. They can't even put it into practice. They can't even get happy about it. They can't even receive it because they are so in the world. They so close to saying that Satan just come and snatch it from them. He don't have to do nothing. He don't have to fight for it. He don't have to do any of that. He just come and snatch the word from it. So for the people who he, Satan is a deceiver, so it will be kind of hard for me to kind of tell somebody that Satan is in control of your life in a way where they will kind of fully receive me without me just pointing out their sins. So it's like if you know that you're deeply in sin and you just out here in the world and you party and you just so happen to hear my video. Um, and just come across my video some way, somehow. You're not even really trying to hear the word of God. Just know that the Lord is sowing seeds into your life, into your heart. And Satan, he's stealing it from you. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's not even giving you an opportunity to experience what the word of God can do in your life. He's just instantly coming and taking it. And it says there's others and others are like seed sown on rocky ground, okay? It says when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with joy, but they have no root. They are short-lived. When distress or persecution comes because of the word, they immediately fall away. Okay, so these are people who have rocky ground. Their hearts are rocky. They don't really have no root. They're not really connected to jesus jesus is the true vine okay so because they're not really connected when they first hear the word it's the people who go to church on sundays you know and they hear a good word from the pastor and they like man that was a good word y'all know how y'all see people on sunday post on facebook the pastor had a good word you know next thing they know they don't care nothing about the word that the pastor preached on this sunday that's because they hear the word but they have no root. Like I said, they're not really connected to Jesus. So it's short-lived. When stress comes into the world, when things start happening, people start getting on their nerves, work start, you know, being hard on them again. They just, they just fall away. They just go back to their regular lives. And that's what it tells you. Say they immediately falls away when persecution comes back then. These people were really getting killed, you know, persecuted. Like, life was hard for them when you try to live like Christ. But for us, it's more of a spiritual thing where, like I said, life just started happening. You get stressed out with things, and you just like, man, this is just too much. Like, I know what the pastor said, but obviously it ain't working for me. And you just go back to being who you were before the word was planted into your heart. It says, others are like seed sown among thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the worries of this age, the deceitfulness of wealth and desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So y'all, this is the one where it got in, but the things of the world choked it. It choked the word and it became unfruitful. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I probably have been every last one of these. My heart position has probably been every last one of these since I've been alive. But what made me really aware of if I was producing fruit or not was this one. The word was getting into me, but God told me, and I mentioned this before in one of my videos uh, when I was talking about the Daniel Fast. God has said, don't be like the world, be like me. And 
God was planting, you know, seeds. I'm reading his word. The word is being sown in church while I'm watching it, you know. And it's being choked up because of the deceitfulness of wealth. Me wanting to have the things of this world. And I'm not really, I'm not really truly connected to God. So everything, I'm not really truly connected to God the way that I should have been connected to God. And we're going to get into that one. We're going to get into that further too. So you can see how important it is to stay connected to God. And it was becoming unfruitful. I was not producing fruit. I was not producing fruit. I'm basing my fruit off of what God was giving me. Because God was giving me certain things based off of my obedience to him. But there was areas where I was not. The Holy Spirit wasn't fully using me. And it wasn't because the Holy Spirit did not want to use me. It's just because I wasn't listening to the Holy Spirit. I wasn't really receiving the word. And it says, and those like seeds sown on good ground, okay, they hear the word, welcome it, and produce fruit 30, 60, and 100 times what was sown. Okay, so when I had went on the fast, I was... God was showing me my heart posture with a lot of things. I was asking him for a lot of things, and he made it known to me that I can't give these things to you right now. I want to, but I can't because of the way your heart is positioned. It was a lot of things that I wasn't doing that was really right. And no, it's no way I can really try to make it sound good. It was just even if I'm doing 99.9 .9 things correct, that 1% thing was still making me disobedient to God still making my heart not fully good ground to where I was producing fruit where I was showing that I was truly his disciples and then I'm gonna let y'all in like on a little a little secret I remember when I was in my room talking to God at this moment and I said God is two things in my life that I feel like feels is cursed and I told him I said it was my money in my relationships and that's when God said to me he said you have to listen to me because I told him I needed help I was like these are two things that I feel is cursed and what I meant by that was that it was in my grasp but for some reason I couldn't fully keep them in my life I couldn't really feel like finally like I'm here I'm good. It was like it was always a test. It was always there, then it wasn't. It was there, then it wasn't. No matter who it was, it was just a lot. It was just hard for me. Whether it was my fault, their fault, it didn't matter. It seemed like it was just there one day, and then it wasn't. And I was like, I, I'm, I'm, I can't do this. It was like I was in the wilderness with these two things. And God said, you have to listen to me. That changed my life. When God said, you have to listen to me, yeah, my mind automatically went to like listen to him more and Batman meditating for him to actually speak to me. But it was more than that. It's like you have to listen to God with what he says in his word. What does his word say? You know, even if God never speaks to you with that, that, that whisper, his words in the Bible is enough. And I wasn't fully listening to God. I wasn't fully being obedient to, to God. So that when you are really obedient to God, you are receiving the word and you're welcome, welcoming it. When you're really hearing it, you're going to act on the word of God. You're not just hearing it and leaving. It's a scripture about that too. Like when people hear the word of God, but then they just turn, you know, they're, they're not being a doer of the word. They're just being a hearer of the word. That's not having a good heart. You know, um, that's not that's not showing that the words that God said or spoken fell on good ground. Because when you have good heart, when you have a good when you have a heart that's good, you hear the word, you welcome it, and it's gonna produce fruit. Your heart matters, okay, when it comes to producing fruit. The heart matters. I said, 
being able to produce fruit depends on the condition of your heart and if you are connected to the true vine so your heart is what makes you able to be obedient to christ to the words of god if your heart is full of you know, the worries of this age, deceitfulness of wealth and the desires of other things, it's going to choke the word out. If you're not really connected to the vine, it's going to be short lived. Because stress going to come because you not your heart is not really connected to God. And if you read in John 15, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes. He prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, thrown in throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words my words remain in you ask whatever you want and it will be done for you my father is glorified by this that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples so if you you see it says if you remain in me and my words remain in you i told you the seed is the word okay so you, god's word has to remain in you has to remain in your heart it can't remain in it if it's being choked out, short-lived because you're not connected to the vine. It's not going to live in your heart. So you have to make sure that you are remaining in God and that his words remain in you. Because when that is done, then you're going to produce fruit. And the fruit, I read to you the fruit in the beginning. You're going to produce the fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control not if you got the big body bins you know the the gucci purse you know the wealth the house the car the the business that's just successful that's all happening because of the grace of god okay neither one of us deserve these things nobody but the fruit the fruit is the sign that the Holy Spirit is really doing a work in your life. Because you're not going to be able to do these things on your own. I know, y'all, trust me. I tried to become a Proverbs 31 woman so many times on my own. But I don't know who the woman was that came out of me whenever I was mad. Because it was good as long as you didn't make me upset. But as soon as you made me upset to another one, I ran out of patience. Look, ran out of patience, okay? You should never run out of patience. You're supposed to always use your patience you should always operate in patience but i wasn't being obedient to the word of god that's why when i told god i said my relationships my and i'm not just talking about boyfriend and girlfriend wife and husband relationships it's like people too i would be cutting them off why because something would happen and it was like i didn't want to be like that anymore i, I wanted all of my relationships to be fruitful even though everybody does not deserve to have a certain amount of assets into your life, but it's like I just wanted to really love. I wanted to have that love around me, and I wanted to love. And God had to say, you had to listen to me, meaning that my heart had to really be positioned in a way where I was obedient to him, to where I was able to be rooted, because if you're not obedient, you're not going to be able to be rooted. If you look in Ezekiel, I know I'm going through some scriptures, y'all. I'm sorry. But I hope you all bear with me. And I hope it's good because you should want to want to bear fruit. Because that shows that you are really God's desire, uh, disciple. If you're not producing fruit, 
what are you doing? You can't claim God and say, I'm a, I am a ambassador of Christ. I am a child of God, but you don't have this fruit or the identity to show it. That's like somebody claiming to be your son or claiming to really truly know you. But let me keep it. I'm just keeping like a person just saying that they're your son, but they don't even look like you. They're saying they're your daughter, but they don't look like you. You looking at them like, I don't see how we, we look alike. You know, or people are going to look at that person like, I don't know. Y'all don't look alike. I can't see how you're his son. I can't see how you are his daughter. But when you look like that person and how the way that we look like Christ is when we are producing these fruits. You know, people can see us and say, dang, this person is very patient. That's different. This person is operating in love. That's different. This person is gentle with me. Even when they didn't have the the a reason, a reason to be gentle with me. They didn't have a reason to continue to love me. But I saw Christ in them because of how they chose to operate, how they chose to live. And let me show you the importance of the heart. If you look at Ezekiel, verse 26, it was chapter 36, verse 26. God said, well, we're going to read from verse 5. It says, 25, I will also sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will place my spirit within you and cause you to follow all my statues. Okay, so what God was basically saying is that I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to remove the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, making it good ground. Because when you have a hard heart full of impurities, full of sin, full of things of the world, you know, full of these desires, it's hard for you to want to listen to God. You're going to be so all about yourself, so all about the things of the world. And like I told you, God told me, he said, don't be like the world, be like me. Yeah, I didn't know that that was going to transform my whole life. I lost so much, <laughs> so much down to my, what I thought was my identity just for him to rebuild me up to my true identity, which is in him, which now I'm able to produce fruit. That's how I'm able to get on here and talk with you guys and have you look at yourself and say, hey, am I producing fruit? Am I really looking like my father who I claim to be out here? That's when you really know you are a true disciple. You are a true follower of Christ. And you can say it with confidence because you know I'm submitting to the Holy Spirit. Because you can't, like I said, you can't produce this fruit without the Holy Spirit. You can't do it on your own. You can pretend all you want to to be operating in love, to be operating in peace. But as soon as somebody comes and just tick you off, you're going to be somebody else. And it ain't going to be Jesus, okay? So you're going to really need the Holy Spirit. And the way that's going to happen is if you stay connected to the vine, being obedient, allowing his words, meditating on his word day and night. Psalms 1, it says, I'm going to read that verse 2. It says, instead, he delights in the Lord's instructions and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted besides flowing streams that bear fruits in its season and his leaf does not wither whatever he does prosper so these things are coming from the old testament and the new testament but it doesn't change the lord wants you to produce fruit he wants you to produce fruit he wants you to be planted but you have to stay connected to the vine you have to stay connected to the vine you have to stay connected to jesus in order to produce this fruit in order to really look like jesus so like i said at the beginning when i asked you to ask yourself am i producing fruit what you're really asking yourself is, do I look like Jesus? Do I look like Jesus? Do I look like my father who I'm telling the world that I am a child of? 
you telling everybody I'm a child of God. It's in your bio, in your Instagram, on your, you know, you you saying it when you talk about your business. But are you really patient with the people that God has put in your life? Are you really gentle with them? That's the fruit. Not how well your business is going. Not how well, you know, you have, like, how well, or how big your bank account is, I should say. The, how big your house is. How well your kids are taking care of that that's not that's not the fruit that's not what proves you to be his disciples so i hope that this video was a blessing to you i'm going to end it here we could keep going i know but i'm not going to make this video any longer than what it is as always, know that I love you, but know that God loves you all so much more. If you are in need of any 101 coaching, that information will also be down below. If it's not down below, it's always going to be in the description box. If you need any prayer requests, feel free to email me if you want to sow a seed. That information will also be down below. But you all be blessed.